A group of American scientists are in Antarctica right now searching for the oldest ever piece of ice in a land of ice, so that is not an easy task. Their goal is to find an ancient sample more than one million years old that will help us better understand our changing climate today. Here's David Schechter on the dot. Antarctica. Of all the continents, it is the highest, driest, coldest, windiest, and brightest. Ready to go, guys? Oh my God! <laughs> and those are the extreme conditions a team of American scientists face as they try to drill the oldest continuous ice core ever found. Antarctica, you're on the air. It works. Unbelievable. Glaciologist Peter Neff set up our video call over satellite internet. Okay, well, I'll uh, turn our camera around. So this is our uh, one of our two Arctic chiefs. So a nice tall structure so I can stand in here. And we have a, a Nordic stove, so a diesel fueled stove. Oh, and actually it's piping hot, boiling. Neff and his colleagues shared some on location videos from their experiences. It is an unforgiving place, even for a guy from the University of Minnesota. 24 seven sun outside. So good glacier goggles are key. Sunscreen is key. Man, it's a little cold. So yeah, you know, in, in <laughs> this amount of time, my hands are pretty good and cold. The project is called COLDEX, a collaboration of American universities and science organizations federally funded through the National Science Foundation. And so we're here for this stuff. So what's so special about ice cores? Well, as snow falls, it traps in tiny air bubbles from the day it fell. In Antarctica, because it's so cold, snow never melts. So the ice just builds up with all those air bubbles inside. Certain locations basically it will just go down and get older with depth and it only kind of travels like one dimensionally. And this is kind of the places where they're looking for these continuous ice core records. At labs around the country, including Princeton University, scientists like Sarah Shackleton okay. measure the levels of greenhouse gases trapped inside the ancient air bubbles. And from that information, they can reconstruct what the climate used to be like. I still get like very trapped up in the idea of uh, like this little bubble used to be part of the atmosphere four million years ago and then it like kind of got trapped up in the ice sheet and now it's in New Jersey and we're measuring it. The study of ice has, has, has shown us with extreme clarity what humans are doing to the earth. Ed Brook from Oregon State is the director of the Coldex mission. And I think it's really important and I, I think it actually has moved the needle in, in people's consciousness. The oldest existing ice cores go back 800,000 years. Over that time, you can see the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the big driver of climate change, goes up and down. Then after the Industrial Revolution, the level skyrockets and here's where we are now with a spike in carbon dioxide that's warming our planet. The goal of this project is to extend this continuous ice core record past 800,000 years and go back in time to 1.5 million years or further when the Earth was warmer. We don't claim that by going back in time we're necessarily going to see something exactly like what we're seeing now. Uh, but what we're looking for are the, all the different ways the system can behave when it's warmer. Identifying one spot on a massive continent that's likely to have 1.5 million years of perfectly preserved ice layers will take the Cold Axe team several years working through brutal conditions. Everybody wave. Do you, are you ever warm when you're sleeping? Are you, are you, I mean, how is that? The best strategy is, is put hot water into an algae and bottle. Living on the ice for six weeks it's a sacrifice. You're away from home, it's the holidays. Just when you start to, to take a moment and think about what you're missing, and there's some, some guilt there. But the team says what we'll all gain in our understanding of climate change will be well worth it. The information that we get, particularly from ice cores, is just so critical to our, our bedrock understanding of how Earth's climate works. I'm David Schechter, on the dot. So the cold X team is camping out, as you heard there, for about a month and a half. There's no running water, so no flushing toilets or showers. But on the bright side, there is plenty to eat. For Christmas dinner, they had scallops with white wine, Ooh. butter, and garlic, and lots of Christmas cookies. I would imagine they have a lot of ice for their cocktails as well. <laughs> that too, plenty.